I've used the stereo strings myself for at least 30 years, if not more. Everybody who comes in here, with very, very few exceptions, plays the stereo strings. And they didn't get there because of any reason except dependability and tone. Hey everyone, this is Chris Keys for Premier Guitar. Today we're at the Ryman Auditorium in downtown Nashville. Today we're checking out Steve Hackett's rig and we're joined today right now by with Vince. Hi this, Chris. Uh, guitar Tech, how are you doing Vince? Yeah, nice to meet you mate. Very good, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, you have, uh, I, you know, Steve is a, a guitar hero, you know, obviously his time is in Genesis, which he's celebrating today with uh, the Foxtrot replay. That's right, 50, 50 years, years wow. of Foxtrot, yes. And then obviously his time with uh, GTR. With yes, Steve Howe yeah. and all the other things he's done, he's he's a guitar, you know, he's a guitar hero. <laughs> he's a, definitely is a guitar hero. Yes, he but he's, he's traveling light. He, he's traveling light. Two Just guitars, right? Two, two guitars. This is the main one. Tell uh, me all about it. People are going to die to know all the in intricacies so of it. Yeah, the Fernandez Golta. It's from from the mid '90s, affectionately known as Gary because it previously belonged to Gary Moore. Oh, so he does tour with this one, okay. Yeah, so the, um, unfortunately when Gary passed away, Steve acquired this from uh, the Gary Moore estate. Uh, so it's a 1990s model. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fitted with a Fernandez 401 sustainer pickups. Uh, so it, it allows him to well, sustain a note as, yeah. long as, as long as there's life in the battery, yeah. he can sustain a note on it. How long does a battery last? Well, it, it, the sustainer really works when the battery is, has got a lot of power in it. Yeah. So w when it gets down to uh, eight volts, it, it's changed. So I, I change it probably every three or four okay. shows. Yeah, you, you want to be pushing it with the fourth or fifth show and then be getting nervous. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you certainly don't want it to cut you out halfway through. No. Now, is this how he received it or did Steve, you know, to use I, his last name, hack it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or is this how was, Gary I, I'm, had it? I'm not absolutely certain, but um, I know the, the, the spare that we're carrying was a, a retrofit that they fitted the sustainer in. Okay. And it's, it's just worked by a, a, toggle, a toggle switch to on off all the... Uh, yeah, walk us through the controls. So yeah, it the, looks like we have a, ma a master tone and volume. A master tone and volume, always full up. Um, it's got the uh, Floyd Rose uh, tremolo. Uh, and the strings uh, uses Ernie Ball extra slinkies, eight to thirty eight. Wow! Yeah, very light. Now is and that it's all f all fingers, no no pick. Now is that something that you know? I I think you said before off camera you've been with him for five or six years. Mm. Is that always been the case with Steve, or that you know of? Because uh, I know he's had I'm, an injury with his left hand. Right. As far as I know, he, he's, he's he's always played with the lighter gauge wow. strings. And you think, man, some of that music that they created, especially that they're celebrating the Genesis, like my dad was a big Genesis fan, so like Watchers of the Sky. Yeah, like that's a yeah. heavy song for the it, time period it, it came out. And like, in fact, actually, when you think about it, they when they made the album, they were only 21, 22 yeah. years old. And it's a really sophisticated record. Yeah, for the for the time, um, and this band they re recreate it really, really well. Yeah, uh, and. I mean, watching Steve on that that pedal board, which he'll probably show you later. Yeah, it, it's 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 quite a lot of tap dancing going on there. Yeah, and and someone that we spoke again off camera about his his, his adventurousness when it came to gear, starting way back then. Yeah, I, I thought maybe I'd see a little bit more things not streamlined because I knew he'd have a lot of gear or at least pedals to make all the sounds that he's created over the years, but maybe more digital, embracing that because well, he was one of the first guys with the. The GK and the Roland stuff. That's right. Yeah, but it's, it's still it's, analog it's, pedals. It's gone back to uh, to all, all analog. That's the sound he, he prefers. Yeah. I mean, we've we've talked about uh, me and the, the front house guy. We've talked about maybe changing the pedal board to get it uh, um, on um, or even MIDI because it's all uh, everything exactly, to get yeah. it to get a, a rig MIDI. But Steve prefers that seeing the physical pedal. And, and switching, it's not just one pedal, it is a combination yeah. there. So uh, that's the system that he prefers. Yeah, I mean, boss gets what boss wants. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> he no. knows the sound he wants and, and he knows how to get it as yeah. well. Yeah. 
And, and and let's be honest, a lot of it's probably just from his compositions in his head and his hands on the yeah, fretboard. Yeah. This stuff all can change as, as it may. Oh, I mean, the, the pedal board changes over 30 years. There's, there's been massive changes really? in the pedals that he's used. Yeah. Well, let's get back to the guitar real quick. Uh, what should we know about the bridge humbucker? Is there anything specific to, uh, do you know which actual uh, model that is? I, I actually don't know that. Because um, say he's had this for, for several years. The, uh, his, his guitar tech, uh, Richard Buckler, who looks after all the guitars and the amps, he'd, be, he'd probably be able to tell you. Oh, Steve it. will probably be able to uh, tell you about it. What, uh, but I don't know. I don't know what the brand is. Okay. On. And what what are the, with the posts here? What, what what actually was going on here? Well, that was something from uh, from Gary's days. That that's that that's how how when we got the guitar. That that was they there. Were, they were already there. Got it. And it must have been like another like a stop stop bar tailpiece. I, w- or something? I would think so. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I don't think Gary had a Floyd Rose on there. I'm going to say I think this was an addition <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, since we got the guitar. Well, Gray, is there anything else we should know about it? Um. Other than it sounds great, it stays in tune, um, is, um, and it's a beautiful sound. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Steve's been long associated before the Fernandez deals and the Bernies, obviously yeah. the '57 that he yes. had in Genesis. Yeah. yeah. So he's always been a gold top guy. It, yes. Yeah. 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 I've never seen him play anything else. Uh, I mean, he's got a, a black birdie, which uh, occasionally comes out as a spare, but th- this is the one he prefers to use. Yeah, that's the paint. The paintbrush that he's Indeed, that is colored yeah. with. Well, let's uh, get introduced to one of his acoustics. Yeah, let's have a look at that. Cool. All right, Vince, uh, what do we got here? Right, so this is uh, Steve's uh, nylon string guitar. It's a, a Yairi. Uh, this was made in 1987. Okay. Hand, handmade, handcrafted in uh, in Japan. Master craftsman. Uh, yeah, yeah. They make some beautiful guitars. Uh, this is a CY127CE. I say built in 1987, and it's it, it, it's just such a, a warm sounding. And it, Steve's such a, a master on the nylon string yeah. guitar. I'm, I'm sure he'll show you later. Uh, only used on one song in the the set. What song is that uh, now? Her, Horizons. Okay. That's uh, that that's from the from the Fox Trot album, um, and so yeah, it, it, it goes through a, a Fishman aura. Uh, and it, it, it just sounds, when it's amplified, it sounds amazing. But on its own, it, again, yeah, it's just that's a where it beautiful. Really shines. Yeah, it's a beautiful sound. And I mean, this is this is the instrument, um, the nylon string. That's really what Steve started on. Where, where he, he, that's where he yeah. got his uh, his finger technique from. And he's done acoustic albums too, oh, a solo. Yeah, so like, yeah. it's funny as we revere him as a, a rock guitar player. Yeah. But, He's he's multifaceted. Well, during during lockdown, he, he actually made two albums. One was a, an acoustic album, and one was an electric rock album. So he, he's 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 never he's never not busy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, what strings are on this? Obviously nylon, but uh, any particular brand? Uh, indeed, yeah, nylon strings. And in fact, here's a pack here. Uh, so he uses. Uh, are all the friends. Yes. Yeah, our sponsor. Are they really? Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah, so uh, I, 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 he's quite a, a light player, so it, strings don't, uh, he, he doesn't break strings very often. Yeah. So in fact, I've never actually had to restring this touch wood. A uh, weird question, but it applies to us as guitarists. Is, is, is he a sweater? You know, the strings corrode um, for, with oily, oily skin. Funnily enough, no, they don't. But what Steve I does, was going to bring this up, okay. <laughs> What he, what he uses is talcum powder, which which dries his hand out, dries his hands out, but uh, it, it it reduces friction as well. So he's, that's how he, can, he gets up the uh, the fretboard the so so fast. Um, but he's always got that's always on stage, and I've always got a a bottle. Well, there's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Vince ain't sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Let's uh, move on to amps. Okay. All right, Vince. Uh, I would have suspected a Marshall, but we see a Marshall cab. But we'll first, uh, talk to me about the head and how you guys got here. Right. So we've been using Engels for about seven or eight years now. What, what, they, were, uh, what they were looking for was an amp that could deliver the cleanest sound at the front end. So what, what we do with the Engel, 
we only use the clean channel, not not the not the crunch channel. Not the fire uh, and fury. No, that no. That the Ingles are known for. Uh, but it, it's such a great clean sound that comes out of that, and any any tone or color that Steve wants to add all comes from the, the, pedal, the board. pedal board. So this is the uh, it's the Engel Powerball six four five the Mark One. Um, and we have say we've been using them for, for seven or eight years now. We, they tested several amps and it came down to a choice between the high watts and, and a an very orange, loud. orange pedal baby. Oh, really? Yeah, which we, we are carrying the orange pedal baby with us as a spare. Dark horse. If the spare goes down. You got to spare the spare? Spare for the spare. <laughs> now, what should we know about the speaker cab? Obviously, 412. It's 4, 4 by 12 the, it's Marshall 1960. Um, is it the A? It's the A then? Because of the slanted, I guess? Yes, the, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, with that formula, I think it's what, 75 watt Celestians? Uh, it, it is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so those, those are obviously the stock speakers that yeah, came with it. Yeah. Well, great. Uh, let's move on to pedals. And I think this is when Steve's going to join us. I, I believe so. All right. We are joined now by the guitar legend himself, Steve Hackett. Steve, how are you doing? <laughs> Fine. How are you doing? <laughs> doing very well. Right. Welcome to Nashville and welcome oh. to the Ryman Auditorium. Thank you, thank you. Yes, you're getting acquainted with the reverb during yes, soundcheck. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's got quite a history. This place, isn't it? it has yeah, the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, it has all the look from the stage of a church and the sound because it's very ringy. So yeah, I was struggling to stay in time with the band earlier on because of the the ring. It's been the ringiest gig so far on the, I'm, on the tour, but you know it makes it live and. Uh, it's a different experience. Every time I bet, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure once you get the uh, the house packed tonight, it'll t probably deaden that up a oh, little bit. Deaden it a bit, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, not too much. Like I said, Vince had talked to us about your guitar and amp already. Uh, okay, yes. But I do want to go back to what the instrument you do with the instrument because right. two of your hallmarks are uh, the vibrato, which is probably almost like a relearned skill after your injury in your left hand. Yes. And then also how expressive you are with the vibrato arm. And it's, yes. it's a thing that you, you tell stories through such slight movements in emotion. Well, so I, I love for you to explain about how there you develop are that. There are, let me make a slight adjustment here okay. as we're going to get to that um, thing. Uh, vibrato is something that I heard guitarists do in the 1960s. Um, I've got a feeling that there was something B.B. King style where he was trying to get finger vibrato to emulate somebody who I think was in the family who yeah. played with slide bottlenecks. So let me get out a, a slide here. Um, so we've got a slight amount of distortion. Um, slide will give you something like... <laughs> with various tones, of course. So yeah. finger vibrato would give you something like that. Um, like, let me put the sustainer on and then, okay, it makes it smoother and yeah. makes it easier to do. The other way to do it would be with the tremolo arm. I think the older guitarists get, the more they rely on that and the less on this. Probably got something to do with arthritis. Yeah. So that's sustain that as Eric Clapton said can take you a while it took me took me years to get that together and of course you can do it at different speeds but then when you take that to um, a whole new level for instance uh, there's something that I do that I think of as a sort of a kind of boiling kettle sort of angry thing in other it's words a great descriptor. if you've got a yeah, say you, 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 you bent the note, you were the same note. So you've got that. Now that's the, the whammy pedal. Yeah. You can also use what I call a burble effect, which is this, this sort of thing. So uh, if you've gone... Um, so, it's something like... Um, it's a fairly angry, angry noise, yeah. depending on the way you've got things set and we can make it angrier still. But maybe what I should do is go over to this end of Yeah, let's start with the, the boss here. Board. Okay. We'll start with the, um, 
the harmonist. harmonist. Okay. And the harmonist does an intelligent three-part harmony, amongst other things. Now, I've got two of them, because I use one for chorus, but okay. I'm in a C minor, so I've got... <laughs> if I've got the sustainer in, it's so much better. Is it hard to not play with the sustainer pickup? Like, is it, you know, because well, it's such a fun tool. The sustainer pickup on the, on, the, um, on, on the guitar means that I don't have to deafen anybody to get sustained. Right. I don't have to go up, you know, there's no tyranny of volume. I don't have to go up to the amp head and hope that it will give me <laughs> yeah. the right note. It's, it's um, the three-way switch on this will give you uh, a few alternatives, including the harmonic of, of the notes. So, um, as we were saying, you know, so if I want that plus the harmonic without that it's I hit a note normal, should we say. Sounds like a lot of volume, but you can hold a conversation over the top of it. Yeah. Um, so that's the harmonist. That's that one over there. Okay. The three-part harmony, all right. The three-part harmony. Can we hear the, the chorus, the chorus yes. setting on the, the chorus, same pedal? The chorus setting on the same pedal, because I've, I've got two of them, the luxury of having two of them, um, I tend to use that mainly for jangly sounds. prettier sound. Very angelic, yeah. Very angelic, that's rather lovely. Um, this one, I used to have one years and years ago, and then they discontinued them, the MXR Phase 90 and Phase 100. Uh, this will give a, a, a fast kind of tremolo. Yeah. And you were one of the first adopters of the, the phaser back back then. Back then, I, I, I was, yeah. Um, Not afraid to take risks. No. Sonically. Exactly. Yeah. So the whammy pedal is a wonderful device, this, um, this big red thing here. Um, it's giving me currently, if I put a little distortion on, it's, I'm, I'm playing a regular note, and it'll take me above, an octave above. If I switch it in, remember that. Um, interesting, but it, it also does various harmonies, including a fifth. So, um, great for doing the following. The jangly thing. Kind of almost like a 12 string. Very much like a 12 string. Yeah. It's a lovely sound. And of course, when distorted, it's um, so when you play fast, it sounds like two guitars playing faster still. So it's yeah. it's it's a uh, it's an interesting moment, really. Uh, all of that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, there's so many things you can do with that. Different harmonies, of course. You yep. know, you can have, say, for instance. Um, if we've got um, uh, this one, it'll give me an octave below as well as my regular octave, so... It's, a very, it's a very heavy sound. Yeah. Um, it'll also give the regular octave plus one above. Very screamy. Um, very lovely. So uh, this is a very adaptable pedal. You seem to use a lot of the functions of it. Sometimes people just get one sweet spot and they leave it. You, you, yes. You explore. I, I, I like to. Um, um, it does all sorts of things. Um, the, most of the time, live, I've got it set on that um, octave above okay. so that I can do various things. Sustain a high note and then go even, even higher. Um, next to it, on the top row, we've got the Line 6, the green box. Again, I tend to use this for, there's a couple of effects. 
One of which is slap echo, very close echo. Mm -hmm. It's it's the sound. <laughs> Um, it's an interesting enough sound. Um, one of the presets it came in with was this, which is um, a backwards sound, but it's giving me forwards and backwards almost simultaneously. So it's it sounds like you're playing very fast, but all I'm doing is running up and down. It's like the Ingve button. Yeah. <laughs> I think of it as instant psychedelia. You could be playing very slow. And practically everything you do is a surprise. <laughs> no bad notes. No bad notes, yes. Um, that'll do various other uh, slow um, backwards things live, but Sometimes, of course, you know, you'd be playing way before the phrase that you want to arrive. So I'd be playing, it's like, where's the guitarist gone? And then suddenly yeah. the sound <laughs> comes back and greets you. I tend to kick that in as that. Um, it'll also do regular repeat echoes, etc. But I've got something else that um, uh, does that down here. This thing is a hum debugger. It just, there are some places that you play where you know the lights go up and it's bzzz, as soon yeah. as I've got the volume pedal down, it's. I mean, it's pretty good here, uh, but there are some places where it's bzzz, and, and so it means, I've got two choices. Either between every phrase, I've got to back that off or hope that the band are loud enough to cover it, mm -hmm. or I switch this thing here, the hum debugger, which is, a great little thing there. This thing is a Hall of Fame, too. This is a, a reverb unit. I haven't got it set on anything. I haven't got it set on anything very long, but that's a kind of short, shortish plate. Now, with all the sounds you have to cover through your own material and the Genesis stuff that you're yes. doing and celebrating yes. on this tour, yes. are you ever playing the guitar dry or something yes. always coloring? Or you know there's uh, dry parts? There are, there are, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, the first track we play live, Ace of Wands, uh, I play it. I've tried bringing in effects and stuff, but I think it's much better if it's just pretty much dry for 90% of it. Maybe mm. right at the end, I switch in some, some repeat echo. Okay. So if I go to this end of things, the Absolutely. yellow line six, this does um, a different kind of distortion, uh, a fuzzbox style distortion, very buzzy, very, very thin. Yeah. It's in instant buzzy, brassy. Kind of a cock wah too, almost. It sits yes, in that it's mid. it's almost like a cocked wah, yes, indeed. And I've got a wah over there. But, uh, is so that you approximating your, I'm oh, sorry to cut you off, Steve. Yes, is it is approximating so your like kind of uh, tone bender that I know that you used at one point? Something like that, yes. I think it's maybe a cross between the tone bender and the, uh, I used to have another one, a Rose Morris um, duo fuzz. Oh, okay. And I sometimes used to use two fuzz boxes together, which gave a very, um, emphatic upper harmonic and you su sustain very well. So yeah, I two bet. fuzz boxes in series. And these ones won't work in, in series with each other. Yeah, they don't they, play they nice. Just, they don't play nice together. But let me get to this one now. If we use the line six, the thin sound, and we use some repeat echo, we've got a rather dramatic delay. Now this one is a much longer delay. Wow. So it's for certain things. Um, um, there's another delay on it. I hardly ever use it for, maybe for one obscure Genesis tune, uh -huh. but not for now. Um, so let me move on to the, the star of the show for me is... It's high praise. This one. The the Sans Amp GT2. Okay, so I think this does very convincing um, tube distortion. Um, back in the day, and many people still do, of course, you're cranking your amp up to get your sound, to get the tube singing. But now, of course, we have the, 
the sounds out. Very thick distortion. If I bring that in, it is. So. This one is almost the same. I've got it set slightly differently so that okay. I can. I can use it in conjunction with other things there. So I'll bypass that. The newest thing I've got um, that we acquired on tour here um, is this little thing, um, this attack decay thing, um, which gives me um, the effect of back, backwards again. It's taking the front of the note off, so we haven't got any. Um, we haven't got any uh, attack. We've merely got the decay of the note. So that works. What, what was the reason for picking that up mid two or what the were you reason, trying to solve? The reason for that is the fact that I've got a swollen Achilles oh. tendon. And so um, after decades of standing on one leg with a volume pedal <laughs> and fading in notes to get something like that, um, uh, time has caught up with me, and so I'm uh, using the volume pedal a little less and for one track where I've got to fade in forever, forever, forever. Um, I've switched to this, so it'll take the top off, off the front of the, the note, note. It'll, it, so, there's no, so there's no attack. It almost gives it like a violin well, almost, approximation. Well, yes, yeah. yes, all, all of that, and, and it's a very handy little device, and I know that it does much more but as I say, it's very new, it's electro harmonics, it's new to me. Um, and so I'll be discovering more what that does yeah, I was gonna say, at home. If anyone's going to get to the bottom of it, it will be you, Steve. I will try, I will try, <laughs> I will try, I'll try. And, um, now, there's another little... Um, for a while, the guitarist of, of the Flower Kings, Roy Nostolt, who's a great player, turned me on to this particular Wah wah, which is, I believe, actually for a bass guitar. But the the, the lovely thing about it is, uh, you don't have to click it in, so ah. it's always ready to go. Yeah, nothing worse than trying to go for that wah note and it's not there; it's not engaged. That's right. Yes, exactly. So, um, its natural position is to retire into into an off position, which is awfully helpful. Um, uh, the next thing, I've got a tube screamer here. I use it a little bit live, probably towards the end of the show when we turn up loud and, um, and I let it's it all hang rock. out. And yeah. It's time to rock, yes. By the time we get to Los Endos, I've got that on this thing. Does the tube screamer then get it? So it goes on top of the sand sand. Sorry? It goes on top of the yes, sand Yes, exactly. Sand, so. so I've, I've got that, uh, I've got it in the line. So it's going through that first of all, then in that. Okay. I think what it does is it takes this guitar and make it sound a little bit more like a Les Paul. So it makes it fatter. That's, mm. the, that's the thing. So um, uh, it's very useful for recording, I think. Um, there are people who swear by them. And they're a great little device, you know, you get a lot, a lot out of it. Yeah. It's, it's, um, it's a wonderful tool. Now, next to this is something I asked a guy called Pete Cornish, English guy, um, to build me a treble booster years and years ago. And he came back with this, an iron booster. Pete Cornish, this thing. Yeah, how are you using that? Well, it's, it's a treble booster, but it's... Um, it just brings things alive. It's um, it's just very lovely. So by the time I've got the two of them going and we're cranked up, yeah, um, full flight, a uh, full flight. Yeah, it, it it sounds like you know maybe a couple of marshals wired up in series, and you know it's it's um, it's a very screamy sound because you know I, I tend to prefer to use handboxes and and also the sustainer pickup on the uh, yeah. On this, so um, people uh, mistake this guitar. They think, "Oh yes, you're playing your Les Paul," but actually, yes, I've got an old Les Paul, haven't we all? 1957 and lovely, uh, but I don't take it out yeah, until I don't with imagine. me. 
there are reasons for that. I, I had three stolen over the years. That's unbelievable. Three, how could you possibly have that? And, and this was when I was with Genesis. It attracted too much attention. So it, it doesn't go out. But I have this. It's a Fernandez it's Les Paul shape. But as I said, it's got two extra features. Most people won't put a trem arm on a, on a um, Les Paul. On a Les Paul. No, just, they're not, not going to do it. Well, there you go. That's it. Yeah. So we've got the suspension. You have such a feather touch when it comes to that. Very light, and uh, these are late, late gay strings. Yeah. Again, you know, the injury that I had to my hand um, meant that I, I didn't quite have, you know, the strength that uh, one would like to have. But luckily, I can still do finger vibratos and uh, all of that. So I think that's a tour around my, my pedal board. That's, uh, that's, that's really Steve, it. I really appreciate it your time. It does a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, they, it's a bit like they've mated with each other, you know. It's, <laughs> they proliferated. It, I started off with, with, a, with a pedal board that was a fraction of this size when I used to sit down and play with Genesis. And um, I was able to reach them all with my feet. Now, of course, I couldn't do this sitting down because I'm, I'm over here. I haven't got legs. Have long you and Vince ever uh, had over, thought over. to maybe use a like a modeler to get ah. the simpler solution, or even a MIDI switcher? Do you know what? I'm sorry, I'm so old-fashioned. I, I don't understand this modern speak. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just a humble plank spanker. That's what I do. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand this stuff, but. Um, but it works. You, you fooled know. us for at least the last 50, 60 well, years, Steve. You're, I don't know. you're yeah. a I mean, magician on the instrument. I mean, this thing, you know, it's lovely. So we can get all those things tapping. I tend to do with the fingernail, um, unlike many, many who tend to do it with the, with the pad of the of the finger, but that's how that came up in 71. Why did you, why originally. do you feel that that's a better for you using the nail uh, versus the pad? No, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll use the pad. It's just, it's, it's the way I, I learned it. It was, I was able yeah. to pull off uh, and, and, and hammer on most effectively like that for me. I know you can go everywhere with this, with this technique, you know, it's um, sky's the limit, but it was a way of playing very, very fast on one string. Um, and, and when you move around, um, it's even better. But, you know, it's, um, you could play like that all night if you like, and sometimes I do. <laughs> well, Steve. When I'm being tasteless, that's what I do sometimes. I don't think anything that comes out of that guitar is tasteless by oh, you, my well, friend. You've been I very really, kind. Thank I, you. I really appreciate your time, Steve, and uh, thank you. I thank you so much, and everyone stay safe out uh, there, and uh, start taking lessons from this guy. <laughs>